how have you successfully managed to get that much volume? Uh, definitely search and social are okay. the most, uh, the biggest. Uh, Not channel. Facebook. Uh, Facebook is social. Unhappy on this Facebook post, click here and talk to a counselor. Better help be trained consumers' most personal health information for profit for profit. One of our favorite conspiracy theories was that our business model is selling data to third parties. Explicitly explained in their privacy policy that they do use your data. Therapy service BetterHelp is under fire this morning. The FTC has proposed a ban on the company for sharing users personal data in order to advertise. BetterHelp is giving back nearly eight million dollars to customers for sharing sensitive health information they promised to keep private. Alan Modis is with us. Alan Modis is a CEO and co-founder of BetterHelp. The guy from Tesla? No, yeah, all, yeah. It's, Who? It's, so you find a therapist through the app, but you don't have your little therapy sessions through the app. It's like, okay, when I was 16, no, I saw <laughs> my grandmother <laughs> naked. Finding a therapist is the actual communication with a therapist is through the app or the mobile what? side or the desktop side. Uh, so you communicate with, with your therapist anytime you... Teens under 18 also whose information, according to this, has been sold. We are HIPAA compliant security yes. system. How do you rationalize it as not being an unethical multiple relationship when you are paying your clients who have received your clinical services to advertise those same clinical services. Jason Nash is back with us and his beautiful girlfriend, Trisha Peters. I really think it's great. It's something I actually really believe in. It's better help. I feel good. We are in the counseling business, not the data business. Data included information on mental health and was shared with companies including Facebook and Snapchat. There's nothing we take more seriously than the security and privacy of our members. BetterHelp says the settlement with the Federal Trade Commission is not an admission of wrongdoing. Well, he, he's depressed, he starts a company, it's successful. So yeah, get in therapy, reach out. <laughs> I'm not here to tell y'all what to do. I'm never here to tell y'all what to do. But as far as what I think about it, personally, I think it's a money grab. Oh, I need my pen. It's in that box up there. If it wasn't recording, we were just not recording this today. Welcome to BJ Investigates, a show I just created and might never do again. So today's episode, we have some kind of like semi-breaking news and it has to do with a company you've definitely heard of, BetterHelp. So I've actually already made a video about BetterHelp on That Surprise Witness TV. And what I focused on mostly was like the business structure and how the incentives are a bit misaligned for a mental health or a health of any sort company. The People that are in charge of the company, they have these quarterly meetings and they talk about customer acquisition and they talk about all this stuff. And it's just kind of like icky, for lack of a better word, that that seems to be more their incentive than healing people and making people better. It's like they talk about people as if they're customers instead of as if they are patients. And in that video, I actually did talk a little bit about how I personally, in my own personal opinion, speculation, imagination, theory, I had thought that it was probably just all a big front for data collection. That was just my theory. That was just my speculation. Well, as of literally less than a week ago, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, has come out and announced that they have reached a settlement with BetterHelp for exactly that reason. BetterHelp apparently, allegedly, according to the Federal, Federal Trade Commission, was in fact selling and capitalizing off of user data. So if you're not familiar with what BetterHelp is, stick around, we will cover that in just a moment. And let's get into how we arrived where we are today, and then we'll talk a little bit about the complaint. As y'all know, I've really been trying to get my life together. That includes everything from being more conscious about what I buy, what I give my attention to, and what I put in my body. I honestly try to meal prep for a lot of my food, but I don't really know how to plan recipes myself yet, so the grocery store still gets a little overwhelming. So that's why the sponsor of today's video is Green Chef. Green Chef delivers seasonal chef-crafted recipes with farm-fresh produce and organic, sustainably sourced ingredients right to my doorstep. Green Chef is a seasonal COF certified organic company, which is amazing. But for me, the best part is the convenience, giving back time in my day, taking a little stress out of the meal choices and the prep. I can skip the grocery store and the ingredients come all pre-proportioned, which makes cooking even easier. Getting a variety of new, nutritious, balanced, delicious recipes to try out has been amazing.
everything. Another really cool thing about Green Chef is there's options for every lifestyle diet, including vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, keto, paleo, Mediterranean, and even gluten-free. So go to greenchef.com or click the link in the description box below and use my code BJI60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. So don't forget to use my code BJI60 at greenchef.com for free shipping on your Green Chef box and 60% off. Now let's get back to this investigation. So BetterHelp is, I don't know, it depends where you look on the internet, how you want to define the company. If you go to its LinkedIn, it says it's a software development company, but for all intents and purposes, what most people know BetterHelp as is an online telehealth therapy or counseling app that you can go and be matched with a therapist or a counselor and talk about your mental health concerns, etc. Well, we're recording this video in 2023, but if you rewind all the way back to about five years ago, a huge YouTuber by the name of PewDiePie had actually called BetterHelp out for a few reasons. PewDiePie released a video that today has over 6 million views. And in the video, he was kind of calling out YouTubers for accepting sponsorships from this company and calling out YouTubers specifically for collecting up to $200 per person that would sign up for the service. So they would put the link in their description box. If people would click and actually sign up, then that YouTuber would receive $200 from BetterHelp. Other things that he complained about in that video were that it was actually not, technically speaking, a substitute for therapy. Terms and conditions said, yeah, you can sign up for BetterHelp, but it's not a complete substitute for in-person therapy. And a lot of people were put off by that because the whole entire way that they advertise the service is that it's therapy. Therapist Katie Morton to talk about the psychology of Jake Paul. And we also talk about my issues and the fact that I probably need more therapy. Okay. So that's why I'm excited to once again say that today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. So if it's not a substitute for therapy, then what is it and why are y'all calling it therapy? He also pointed out that the company had some questionable auto renewal practices, but basically people were being charged for things that they had thought that they had canceled and weren't gonna be being charged for. Well, after that, all of a sudden, maybe they did change a few things here and there, especially particularly having to do with vetting the counselors and making sure they were actually licensed. But still, even after that, there were huge YouTubers that were still accepting sponsorships from better help. We're talking like Shane Dawson, we're talking Philip DeFranco, we're talking massive YouTubers. Sponsor better help. My sponsor better help. Better help for sponsoring today's video. Better help who is sponsoring this video. Sponsor and partner better help. I love working with better help. Video sponsor better help. About better help. Better help. So excited about better help. And YouTubers even who were health professionals themselves, some of the mental health professionals themselves. The second reason is because BetterHelp has been sponsoring some of our episodes. Lots of people kept doing that, probably still collecting that $200 per person sign up amount, which is a lot. I mean, that is a lot of money. They did a back of the napkin type of equation on the PewDiePie video. And he's like, okay, if you have a thousand people. Just get a thousand people signing up. You just made $200,000. It's like, that is crazy. Another thing that happened was BetterHelp put a lot of money into advertising and into marketing. According to this recent filing, which we will get to in a little while, BetterHelp spent like 10 to $20 million per year advertising over the last few years. And you gotta, you gotta think that probably a lot of that is going to these YouTubers and these content creators and podcasters. And by plugging in what it is you wanna work on, you get matched up with somebody who's ideal for you and it's already super affordable. You really can't go wrong. BetterHelp is the ticket. So go to betterhelp.com slash Stevo and figure out how much therapy can help you. An effective marketing strategy. I mean, it's, you're hard pressed to find anybody who hasn't heard of the business. Another thing that BetterHelp did in this marketing campaign and in this PR push was that they would silence dissent. Not only would they kind of seemingly talk to a lot of these doctors and things on YouTube to kind of give them a little bit of good PR spin. Now I talked to Mr. Matas about this terms and conditions issue. But also BetterHelp as recently as like last year was sending cease and desist letters 
to YouTubers who were criticizing them. Now, one video that gave me a lot of the information that I used in my video that I made recently on that surprise witness was a creator by the name of Kiki Chanel. She does a lot of anti MLM videos and things like that. And within like, I think a month of her posting that video, it was just gone. It's disappeared, it's not on the internet anymore. And thankfully I did download it before she deleted it, but I don't know her, we are not in any type of communication, but I can imagine that a similar similar thing happened to her that happened to other creators who have come out and openly said that they were threatened with lawsuits by BetterHelp. Also shout out to all of the goons at BetterHelp who were for sure watching this video because your boss made you sorry that you have to be here. Um, <laughs> love you the most. I hope that you're getting paid a nice hourly wage to watch my content and send me a cease and desist letter. So BetterHelp, as we've discussed, has spent a lot of time, effort, money, resources, and all of that into its advertising. Not only advertising its company, not only talking one-on-one -on -one to people who would silence dissent online, but also sending out the cease and desist to make people delete videos or stop talking about them. Now, a big criticism that BetterHelp was facing over the last several years is that they are irresponsible at best with the data that they collect from users. Now remember, BetterHelp markets itself as therapy. You have Steve-O the failed clown talking about he loves going to therapy and if you wanna to go to therapy too, you should go to BetterHelp. And an endless list of very, very influential, very, very powerful influencers and famous people, celebrities saying exactly the same thing. Well, recently, just last week, actually just three or four days ago at the time of filming this video, the FTC did release that statement. Now, not only did they release the statement, but they released several documents that are publicly available in relation with this case. And we're gonna read from that. In addition, there's also a complaint and it looks just like a legal complaint that you would see filed in court. But this is with the Federal Trade Commission, which is a governing body, a regulatory body. It's a little bit different than going to court. It's not like a real lawsuit, but it is kind of like court. I mean, the, the document is typed out just as if it's a lawsuit. So let's look a little bit at the blog post, which is kind of walks you, there's kind of like an overview of the complaint really. So I really like this whole first paragraph. So we're gonna read that together. It's by a person named Leslie Fair and it was put out on March 3rd, 2023. And it says as follows, in the hierarchy of confidential data, health information ranks right up there. And in the hierarchy of health information, details about a person's mental health may be among the most confidential. Now remember, this is the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission that's writing this here. But according to the FTC, that is not how online counseling service BetterHelp viewed it. The FTC says the company repeatedly pushed people to take an intake questionnaire and hand over sensitive health information through unavoidable prompts. And it promised to keep that information private through statements like, quote, rest assured, any information provided in this questionnaire will stay private between you and your counselor. But from the FTC's perspective, a truthful statement would have been, rest assured, we plan to share your information with major advertising platforms, including Facebook, Snapchat, Pritio, and Pinterest. A proposed FTC settlement with BetterHelp includes a $7.8 million payment for partial refunds to give back to the BetterHelp customers, which are patients. I don't like how they keep calling them customers. These are medical patients. They sought out this service as patients with health conditions. This isn't customers. This isn't like you're signing up for Twitter. It's a medical app. It's a, for a therapist, but whatever. So it says it sends an unmistakable message about just how seriously the FTC takes this kind of betrayal of trust. And so a lot of the complaint revolves around this intake questionnaire, which was not optional. The intake questionnaire was in huge, big letters, big right on the front of the website. You couldn't get any farther without taking it. And then the privacy policy was like in these tiny little words way at the bottom, you had to click on it and then try to figure out how to read legalese to get through it. It was just not accurately or properly disclosed according to the FTC. This questionnaire would ask you things like your email and all of that, but it also would ask you things like, do you feel like you would be better off on a live? Or do you often wake up feeling that way or things like that. So uh, one thing here that's quoted is that it asked customers, AKA patients, if they experience overwhelming sadness, grief, or depression. And frankly, that is obviously 
health information. That information was then sold off to Facebook to use to advertise things to not only you, but also your friends. This happened to over 4 million people, I think. And then this blog post goes on to say, to kind of calm down the customers, AKA patients, and assuage their concerns about their private data, BetterHelp made a variety of confidentiality promises to the patients. Visitors to the site were told at the outset that the company only collected general anonymous background info about you and the issues that you want to deal with in online therapy. But again, they said that it was anonymous. That turned out not to be true. So it was actually over 5 million people. Oh my God. So it says, that's not all. According to the complaint, BetterHelp broke its privacy promises by disclosing to Snapchat the IP address and the email addresses of about 5.6 million people. The reason for that was to target them with BetterHelp ads. In addition, for a six month period, the company also disclosed to another app called Critio the email addresses of over 70,000 visitors, including people who had looked into pride counseling and faithful counseling. So that's another part of this complaint that I found to be very interesting. On the very first page of the complaint, it says, BetterHelp is also doing business as, and then lists a bunch of other company names, but they're all BetterHelp. So for example, Compile Incorporated is actually the business name of BetterHelp. So we did do a little bit of research into Compile Incorporated and we ended up down like a several hour long rabbit hole. It's probably gonna end up needing to be his whole own video. But BetterHelp wasn't even the name of the company in California until literally last year. Literally last year, the name of the company BetterHelp on legal paperwork was Compile Inc. Compile what? I mean, the obvious thing that comes to my mind is data. It seems to me from that name, and this is speculation, that the whole point of BetterHelp from the very beginning, from the outset, was to compile data and do what with it? Make money off of it. Sell it, use it in a way that they could capitalize off of it. But that's not all. BetterHelp did business as many other names, including <clears throat> my therapist, teen counseling, which was targeted toward teenagers, Faithful counseling, which was targeted toward people of the Christian faith. Pride counseling, which was targeted toward members of the LGBTQ community. Eye counseling. Regain, which was a couples counseling targeted company. And Terraputa, which was targeted towards people who spoke Spanish as their first language. So if you were to go, like, let's say you're typing in like LGBTQ therapy or whatever, something called Pride Counseling could come up. And you could think it was a whole separate company from BetterHelp. It doesn't say anything about BetterHelp on that website, but it has that same intake questionnaire and the same data they are still collecting off the people who were signing up for it. And so all these different names compile Kyle, my therapist, teen counseling, faithful counseling, pride counseling, eye counseling, regain, therapeuta. It's all better help. All of it's better help. I did not know that until reading this complaint. But they made extra promises to people who were self identified as members of the LGBTQ community or self identified as members of the Christian faith. They promised they would not give their email addresses. They promised they would not share their data. And according to this FTC complaint, they did just that. And it wasn't just like, oops, data leak. It was intentional, according to this FTC complaint. It was on purpose. It was for the purpose of capitalizing financially off these people's information. In the back of this blog post, they list the key takeaways from the complaint. And there are like six or seven of them here. The key takeaways are precedential items that seem to have been said for maybe the first time here in this action by the FTC against BetterHelp. The first one is personal information as defined by the Federal Trade Commission can simply be your email address or your IP address if that email or IP address was accessing a website that was for medical purposes. For example, if you're going to BetterHelp, it's a therapy website, and a third party such as Facebook receives your email address knowing that it came from BetterHelp, that automatically counts as private health information because of the way that BetterHelp operates. It is a medical service, essentially. And so this is, seems to be the first time that the FTC has said an email address is private health information if it comes from a website associated with healthcare. The second key takeaway here had to do with making sure that a company does have policies and practices in place to protect people's healthcare data, which that doesn't seem to be necessarily novel, but it is here in the key takeaway points. 
The FTC also talks a little bit in the complaint about deceptive practices when it comes to disclosing the privacy policies. We touched on it a little bit earlier. Also, I've touched on it in my new channel, Study Break, about the Lashgate situation. The FTC takes it very seriously, how big or how small or how, how much good faith a company seems to be demonstrating whenever they are doing these disclosures. For example, the FTC said it was unacceptable that they put this intake questionnaire where they were gathering all the data, huge, and you can't miss it and you can't avoid it and you have to take it, versus the privacy policy being really small and you have to click on it and go to another page. That is deceptive according to the complaint that was gonna be filed by the FTC. Another thing that the FTC thought was very important was that if a company like BetterHelp knows that the person they're giving a list of email addresses to, for example, is going to be able to unencrypt the email addresses, which BetterHelp did know according to this complaint, that is not allowed. So what BetterHelp would do is they would run all these email addresses through this like, what is it called? A slinging hash? The hash slinging slasher. But they knew that Facebook had the technology to basically undo it and see all the email addresses and they turned it over anyway. That's not allowed according to the FTC. And then the final thing that I thought was very important because it rang alarm bells in my head having to do with another data driven healing healthcare app. <clears throat> It has to do with putting HIPAA in giant letters on the bottom of your website page. So we've seen that, Lima from Aura, we've seen that. She has done that on her website. And it's like they'll put HIPAA at the bottom to make them look legit. It's the purpose of it. But the FTC has said for seemingly the first time, and girl, I have some reports to file now, that let me read it exactly word for word from this blog post. It says, when it comes to conveying claims to consumers, a picture can be worth a thousand words. Almost all of better health Help's pages displayed multiple seals from third parties. Among them was a depiction of the medical caduceus. I think that's the snake with the thing in the middle, the snakes and the staff thing. And the term HIPAA. The complaint alleges that BetterHelp's use of that visual falsely signaled to consumers that a government agency or other third party had reviewed the company's practices and determined that they met HIPAA's requirements. And it says, have you checked your site recently for graphics that could send similar deceptive messages? Anyway, so thought that was interesting. Got some complaints to file on that. There was one thing in this complaint that I wanted to read to y'all because it was just so egregious. Okay, here's one thing. In 2017, BetterHelp delegated most of its decision-making authority over its use of Facebook ads to a junior marketing analyst who was a recent college grad, had never worked in marketing in his life, had no experience and almost no training in safeguarding consumers' health information. It says, in doing so, it gave to that person, better help gave that person carte blanche to decide which visitors and users' health information to upload to Facebook. So just like some guy that just graduated college, they like handed him like millions of email addresses and were like, yeah, yeah, use this to target ads on Facebook. This is a huge company and that's that's why we like to make videos like this because a lot of people are very trusting, we'll say. I mean, all the way down to possibly naive, but I've been naive, I've been there. I've trusted people who told me things. I won't say who on YouTube, I might get banned off this app, but I've trusted people too. But you can't trust all these people. You have to do your own research, you really do. And even when you do your own research, sometimes companies are lying straight to your face. So when you're giving information out, you really do have to be very careful. This like random guy who'd never even what did it say? Never even worked in marketing in his life is in charge of like millions of people's private health information. There was one other thing I wanted to tell y'all because it was just, it was like shocking just like that. Oh, okay. <sighs> also from at least 2017, it seemed to really have popped off that year. When a visitor reached the question as to whether the visitor was taking medication, they were shown the following statement. And we'll put the picture up here from this complaint. It says, Rest assured, any information, right right under the question, are you taking medication? This disclaimer was there. Rest assured, any, any information provided in this questionnaire will stay private between you and your counselor. In December, 2020, they updated that. Instead of any information, then it said, rest assured, this information, so just that question, right, about the medicine, this information will stay private between you and your counselor. They could have left it there, they did not. 
they updated it again. Your health information will stay private between you and your counselor. And then there's a picture of that one. And then by October, 2021, they just removed that altogether. So at least they weren't telling people at that point, yeah, yeah, we're gonna keep this private. But I still think, and the FTC seems to agree, you have to tell people that you're not gonna use their data. You can't assume that they're gonna assume you're gonna sell it to Facebook. That's the hammer getting dropped down right here by the FTC. Interestingly, this prompted us to go back and look at the terms and conditions and the privacy policy policy on the Wayback Machine, which live and die by that. Chris Jenner works hard, but the Wayback Machine works harder. Apparently, all the way back in 2013 or 2014, at the very beginning of this site, they did tell users in the privacy policy, we might sell all your data. We might sell the company. We might sell all your data. So like, just don't, uh, don't expect us to not sell your data, basically. And honestly, y'all could have a lot of fun going back through the privacy policy of the BetterHelp website. I mean, I invite you to do that if that's something you're interested in doing. Like I said in my That Surprise Witness video, and like I've now said in this video, we could really go down several, several rabbit holes as far as what really went on with this BetterHelp situation. I could make probably a whole series on better help if you really wanted one. But I wanted to cover mostly this FTC complaint. I wanted to alert y'all to the fact that yes, there has been a $7.8 million settlement. Yes, the FTC does seem to be cracking down at least somewhat on these bad actors and on these people that are selling our private sensitive data. But in my opinion, it's nowhere near enough. People's entire lives have been ruined by this company. Just go scroll through the Better Business Bureau reviews of this place. I mean, people People are claiming on complaints filed with the Better Business Bureau that BetterHelp has charged them, some of them hundreds, some of them thousands of dollars against their consent, against their will. Nobody answers when they try to, you know, go ahead and email them. There's been lots of people who have said that the therapists themselves on BetterHelp have ruined their lives, have traumatized them further than what they were worse off today than they were before. BetterHelp was purchased by Teladoc in 2015 for $4.5 million, and today it's probably a billion dollar company. I mean, just between the last two years alone, the revenues for BetterHelp alone have grossed over a billion dollars. And so this $7.8 million is literally nothing to this company absolutely nothing to this company. And then they're not even having the decency, better help, to say, yeah, we messed up. We did wrong by our customers. We shouldn't have given their information to Facebook and Snapchat and the rest. N no, they're still denying wrongdoing. They paid out this settlement because they know it's way cheaper than it would have been for each and every instance if they had to pay for each and every instance being found liable by the FTC. No, they're saying that's industry standard. We just got caught, basically, is what they're saying. I think it's deplorable. I think it's sick. I will not be taking no intake questionnaires off the better help and i would advise that y'all don't either but of course you're adults and i strongly urge you and encourage you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions as always this is not legal advice do not send hate to anyone that i've mentioned in this video this is just a public service announcement let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below in the meantime facts ain't defamation love you mean it okay bye